Then we're continuing uh, our business, um, which is our reading of Bhagavad Gita. And of course, we give our respects to Gurudev, who's inspired the project. We give our respects to Jainanda Maharaj, who's there in, in Mungar Mandir together with Gurudev. Uh, Garusundra is there as well, I think, if I'm not mistaken, and Goravani. All these are our great, respected, and beloved sadhus, let's put it that way. And so I'm very happy to give my respects uh, to them and um, and to show my humility, because, of course, I know nothing of these things. I just try to read and share the feelings I have in my in my heart. And that's what I want to encourage you to do, too, when you're reading, to feel not to not to be a philosopher, but to to feel what you're seeing in the text, and to and to read as a heart, and not as a and not as a, a brain. Um, our God brother Tarun Baba last week on Wednesday, he said something which I've thought about all week long. If you were there, then you know. But if you weren't, then I'll, I'll tell you. He said that one of the last times when he visited his um, Gurudev, uh, Anandadas Babaji, he said to him, Baba, I'm, I'm just a school teacher. How do I bring my practice to my school teaching, to teaching children? And, and Babaji answered him by saying, you serve the children as if they were divine. You look at each and every little pupil, and Tarun Baba, he has the really small ones, you know, the really, I don't know what, third class, I think. You look at each one, and you, you look at the divinity in the heart of each one, and you serve it like a manjari. And I thought that was just a beautiful uh, way to think about the work that I do as a teacher. Too, just like it was for Tarun Baba. So that's what I, I'm trying to focus on with you too, to, to do this as a service to Gurudev, of course, because he asked me, and to the Vaishnavas, but to do it as a service to you, to, to bring you what I feel in my heart to the divine in your hearts, which, as you know from listening to me, I'm convinced that you have. <laughs> And then what do we mean by service? What do we mean by seva? You know, in the West, we talk about service. I do a task and then I get some material benefits. I do a task and you pay me, or I call for the plumber and, and he comes or she comes and then I pay her or him. The service is like that. It has an equation, a give and take. Gurudev would call that Amazon service. You order, you get. But that's not service for us. Service, seva for us means giving from my heart into your heart. Trying to find that divine place in me and giving it to the divine place in you. Seeing in you that little bit of, of Radha and Radha's love. That tiny little part and parcel that is there in you. It is. And uh, by doing that, taking a tiny, tiny little baby step towards Manjari Bhav. So this is what we're trying to do here. We're not doing philosophy. We're not trying to be experts in Bhagavad Gita. We're trying to see what the text can tell us about, about feeling. That's really, what, that's really what this project is. Um, and so we remember, I, I've said it every time, but it's worth repeating, that, that uh, Gurudev has taught us that this, is a, this book is an introduction to bhakti. It's an introduction to finding divine love everywhere, everywhere in the universe. And it's an introduction to finding divine love in Krishna's pastimes well before the time of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. That's the project we have. 
So the last time <clears throat> we finished this sequence of, of verses that were about the relation between the creation and, and the creator, Krishna. And, um, and we'll move on today. I promised you it's been going slowly, I think, but I, I hope not too slowly. But we talked about what last time about the cosmic order and what that means. <clears throat> we talked about we talked about the energies, <coughs> sorry, that make up the cosmic order. That the energy in the cosmos are, is the expansion of Krishna, and since it's the expansion of Krishna, it's the expansion of divine love. I've talked to Gurudev this last week about energy and love <clears throat> and ask a few questions. And what I learned was that all energy is prema. That is the primary energy. So even material energy. So the energy that if you throw a football, and the energy in the ball when it's flying through the air, it all goes back to to love somewhere, it goes back to prema, it goes back to the, the muscle in my shoulder, which goes back to the development of my body, which goes back to my heart and my soul and my upbringing. And ultimately, every energy in the whole universe is prema. Everything. It's not just Radha's presence, but it's en every energy everywhere. So that was one of the, if you like, main moments of this discussion about the cosmos in these first 10 verses. We talked about the different expansions of Krishna. Krishna. We talked about um, the, um, the karmic system. And then just last time, we talked a lot about Krishna's attachment. Krishna, Krishna's attachment to the things in the world, and to, the, to what he does in, in the world. Because there was this kind of paradox that Krishna seems to be involved without being involved, attached without being involved. He makes the rules, he makes the karmic system, the karmic rules, and then he stays out. But then we found out in this last verse, uh, 9.10, that wherever Krishna's karmic system, wherever, wherever anything in the cosmos touches a soul, wherever it touches a heart, wherever it touches feelings, then Krishna is involved. Where there, wherever there is divine energy touching a divine soul, Krishna is there involved. He's not passive. He's not independent. So it's easy to say Krishna is involved in all the material aspects of the cosmos. cosmos. Of course, he makes the planets, he makes the trees, and the water, and the stones, and the, and the bodies, too. But wherever he touches a soul, then he's involved. Then he's involved intensely and directly. And this is the way that Bahav, this is the way that Prema, love, gets transferred to the jivas. It's through this connection. And then finally, last time we had this little passage in the, in the last verse about um, there were some metaphors about how Krishna touches the world. There was first a metaphor about fragrance. Prabhupada wrote that he's involved in the world just like we would be involved in a flower whose fragrance we smell. And, I, and I, under, I tried to make an emphasis on that because I thought it was so important that this beautiful and very subtle kind of sensual experience of a flower is the example of how Krishna is involved in, in the world. And then the second example we had from verse 10 was about, about seeing, about sight, the metaphor of, of vision. That, uh, that Krishna sees from afar. And we said that, well, even when Krishna is seeing and he's not touching, he's involved. And then we remembered the sidelong glance 
of Radhika and the sensual power, the sensual energy that we find in that sidelong glance, that just a sidelong glance from Radhika to Krishna is enough to, to change the whole course of, of the Leela. And so when we read in verse 10 that there's a glance from Krishna's eye on the world, we can remember that and think of that and know that there's a, there's a transfer. There's a transfer of, of, of <clears throat> loving energy, of devotion. There's a transfer of sensuality. There's a transfer of the divine, which happens only in the glance. And let's not forget the power of the glance. And then the very last thing, last time we talked about darshan, right? It was Gopika who brought up, reminded us that when we take darshan, when we take darshan of the deities, when we take darshan of guru, we are seeing. We are seeing and being seen. Darshan means to see and be seen. So the, the, the act of, of paying respects to the deities or to the guru is an act of seeing and being seen. All this is to say that Krishna's presence is felt through the vision too, through the eyes, through the seeing and being seen. That's where we were last time. And this time we will talk about verse... Um, oops, wait a minute. At the spotlight for Gurudev. Yes, very well. There we are. Maybe for me. This time in verse 11, and actually the next uh, three or four verses, we'll talk uh, a lot more about, about um, the devotional relationship between uh, the jivas and Krishna in the creation. So we can go right to verse 9. Let's see. Let's see. Sorry, verse 9.11, excuse me. Let's have a look. There it is. The first word of verse 11 is fools. It says, fools deride me, Krishna when I descend in the human form. They do not know me. They do not know my transcendental nature and my supreme dominion over all that be. So here we want to ask, what is a fool? Who is a fool? Are we all fools? Is there anybody who's not a fool? What is this transcendental nature that fools are not seeing? The word in the verse that you can see, it's up here, is muda in Sanskrit, which is rightly translated as foolish men, fools. But what is a fool? A fool is not just somebody who's wrong. It's not just somebody who says, the, 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 the car is blue and the car is red. A fool isn't just wrong. A fool is someone who's not taking care to being right. Who's not caring about what truth is. Who's not, not investing heart and soul in what truth is. It's somebody who's wrong, yes. But it's somebody because, who's wrong because of a weakness in the heart. It's somebody who's wrong because of weakness in attention. Somebody who's wrong because of weakness in focus. Because looking at the wrong thing, maybe. In this case, fools are wrong about Krishna because they're not seeing Krishna. They're not attentive to Krishna. They don't understand the relationship between Krishna's human form, his 
expansion in the material world and his transcendental or spiritual form. They don't understand the relation. They don't wow. understand the relation between Krishna we see, the material Krishna, the avatar, and the transcendental, fully perfect spiritual Krishna, the Krishna who is uh, Krishna itself, transcendental it, itself. So, so I, what I'm trying to say, it's a problem of, of relation, of understanding the relation between the energies, the lower energy in which, in which Krishna is material, and the higher energy in which Krishna is a pure soul. And this relation between them is a tension of energy. And if there's a con connection, it's a relation of devotion. The only true connection between Krishna in the material world and Krishna in the transcendental level is through the devotional relation. It cannot be just facts. It cannot be just logic. It cannot be just philosophy. The only thing that links God and his avatar is loving relation. So this tells us that the passage, the, the, the path between material world and spiritual world, there's only one, and it's loving relation. Loving relation. Fools see the material form. Radhe Gurudev? Fool cannot see. What is the line? The line is, fools deride me when I descend in human form. They, ah. they do not know my transcendental nature. It's transcendental nature means Allah. Allah <laughs> Fool cannot understand that. I cannot re understand without her birth. My uh, body is always transcendental, but they cannot connect me with to see divine thing, so they cannot understand me. Mm. They see the material nature, Krishna form in the deity form mm. is the area. Krishna, where he will appear, it will become divine. Yeah. So he is divine. And why not they can see because his material nature is so covered with him. Hmm. He can go to the divine nature of her. What is the divine nature? His energy. Hmm. And 10, 15, you say that Krishna is never understand without his energy. Energy. With his energy, he understands himself. Mm. And that is his energy, divine is one is a material energy, one is a spiritual energy. Is material through the material energy we want to understand it. That is my problem. And we cannot. No. When he is in material body, means the deity form, is also he is divine. But we see material nature because I am material mm. and I am living in material nature, so we don't relate with him mm. that here is so he is divine. Why not we relate? Because my material nature, so we are poor. It's blocked. Huh? 
blocked. And only we can see is a divine everywhere. And where he goes, it becomes divine. Hmm. We see this when we know his energy. Yeah. Divine energies. Aladini Shakti, Sri Radha. Yeah. Radha, Radha. So, the person who see with material nature, they are totally fooled because they have no spiritual energy realization. Hmm. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. Thank you, Gurudev. <clears throat> so, what does Prabhupada say then? Uh, let's go back. Yananda Maharaj also want to share on. Please go ahead. Yes. <laughs> so Uttama, Uttama Ji, Uttama Prabhu is explained so nicely. I was, uh, you know, listening very attentively. So we were saying this food is thinking I am this material body. Whatever I see, even, even though we see the deity of Radha Moha, oh, this is material. Yeah. Because uh, they are living in the material energy. So, but uh, some or other, if we contact with a spiritual person, like Rashka Vaishnava, like Gurudev, then we start thinking, oh, no, we are not uh, this body. We are spirit soul. But also in this point, point is not enough. So actually, we have a spiritual body, eternal spiritual body. We have uh, Swarupa. And then if fixed in our Swarupa, then we can see everything is spiritual. Like Gurudev said, uh, Antaranga Shakti, from Antaranga Shakti means internal potency. Mm. Uh, it comes Bahiranga Shakti, external energy. Yeah. This is like a, like a one coin of, you know, like an opposite one, coin, you know, coin the two sides. One surface is one is like uh, say underside. So, but if our consciousness, our our what is it, our attention, our consciousness go to spiritual consciousness, Radha Mohan, then we can see always the relationship with the soul and super soul, also divine energy. But uh, if we see opposite one, like if we see through false ego, then we can see or oh, everything uh, I can enjoy, everything for me, not for Krishna. So this is uh, Uda Prabhu explained very nicely. I was, you know, I was, <laughs> I was very, uh, you know, very much uh, appreciated and uh, so nice. Mm. Thank you very much. Rade. But uh, Jainanda Prabhu, do you go, Maharaj, you go beyond what, what the verse says, really, and give the solution to not being a fool. It's to associate, associate with Razikas, like our Gurudev. This is the solution that Prabhupada does not talk, talk about here, yet, at least. So very nice. So we can look. At what Prabhupada does say then, he says, from the other explanations of the previous verses in this chapter, it is clear 
that the Supreme Personality of Godhead, although appearing like a human being, is not a common man. So in other words, as, as both Gurudev and Jainanda Maharaj said, to the fool, they cannot see him as spiritual. They see him as a common man because they're covered with their material blockage. They, it tells us a bit about the personality of Godhead, this personality that Bhagavan, Krishna, has. The material characteristics are close to those of human beings, but they're always connected with transcendental characteristics that only, that only uh, jivas who are clear in their spiritual identity can see. So the personal traits that we possess are similar to those of the Krishna we see in material world, but they're not the same. Then Prabhupada continues, the personality of Godhead, Bhagavan again, who conducts the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of the complete cosmic manifestation, cannot be a human being. Of course, this is a task that's impossible for a human being. It has to be done by a god. But Prabhupada says, there are many foolish men who consider Krishna to be merely a powerful man and nothing more. So we could consider Krishna in his material form if we are foolish men or women. We can consider him to be a human with very, very large powers or a material being with very, very large powers, enough powers to create and maintain and destroy the universe. But even if all this were true, there would, no, there would be no spiritual aspect to Krishna. There would need, be no uh, spiritual energy. There would be no, no loving energy. It, it would be pure power without love. Creation, maintenance, annihilation. There could be no Leela. There could be no Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So it's only to the degree that Krishna is a spiritual being, whether we see that or not, whether we are foolish or not. But in any case, he must be a transcendental being, a transcendental being who has loving energy, who relates to his devotees in a loving way, who's relating to his Radharani <clears throat> in a loving way. Uh, Prabhupada continues. I feel yes? this also can see when I don't take shelter of Radhika and I have not divine vision by her grace, I cannot see Krishna. Uh -huh. Because they are foolish to not take shelter of Radhika and they are foolish because Krishna cannot understand himself without the Krishna. Uh -huh. So how I will understand when we are fool? Hmm. Hmm. We are living in material energy and I want to know about Krishna with my eyes and my feeling what is totally material, they are fool. Hmm. So not even Krishna understands himself fully without... Without energy, how I will understand. Uh, uh, mm. Beautiful. 
Yes. This, this is one I say, I could say, this is one of the highest understanding of you know, mm. this food. Because without da 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 ni, it's <laughs> very nice. Mm. Without da 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 ni, we cannot understand dear Krishna. Or we cannot understand even small portion of Krishna without his energy, divine mm. energy. Read the Dantra 15. What? Dantra 15. Read which Gurudev, sorry? 10 15. 10 15. 15. It says, Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own internal potency. O Supreme Person, origin of all, Lord of all beings, God of gods, Lord of the universe. And the internal potency is, of course, Radharani. Hmm. You cannot know yourself. And I want to see, I want to know. So he said, foolish, cannot understand. When this key, they have, they have no discipline. Mm -hmm. <coughs> because I want to see him through my material energy. Hmm. <laughs> My energy is material energy because I'm conditioned and tougher. So we start with foolish. Hmm. Hmm. This is foolish. This is foolishness. Of us. So Prabhupada continues. Um, there are many Ishvaras, controllers. <coughs> and one appears greater than another. In the ordinary management of affairs in the material world, we find some official or director, and above him there is a secretary, and above him is a minister, and above him is a president. Each of them is a controller, but one is controlled by another. So what makes our Ishvara, our Krishna, controlled is, of course, the loving energy of Radharani. This is the yeah. connection between all the levels of control that happen in the world. <laughs> hmm? so who controls this planet? They understand. This. Yeah. Oh, very good. So this is what this is what a fool is, huh, Gurudev? It's the uh, it's the one who doesn't see this relation of Radharani because of material covering. Hmm? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> then they take the base of Oops. Hmm. Yeah. The foolish devotee gets what he looks for, doesn't he? The foolish devotee wants a Krishna who is only power and opulence, and that's what he sees. 
he blocks the rest. But the devotee who wants a Krishna who is guided and governed by loving relation of Radharani sees that. So once we have the insight, a clear heart and a clear mind and can see that, then that's what we get. That's the, that's the God we, we have a relation to. So pure devotees, what we all try to be, understand the love in their hearts as the, 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 the expansion of the love of Radharani. And then she control. And she control. And this controlling energy who controls someone, they understand that. <clears throat> yeah. No other energy. To control is a higher energy. Mm. Means her higher energy is more higher than him. Who control him. Yeah. I need to say, but please, dear, please, so far, I need to say, tomorrow, today, after the last time, see, you can do Seva Shiva or Samadhi. So Prabhupada continues, he says, in the Brahma Samhita, it is said that Krishna is the supreme controller. But there are many controllers, as we just said, many controllers, undoubtedly both in the material and the spiritual world. But Krishna is the supreme controller, Ishvara. Paramara Krishna. And his body is such chid ananda, non material. Such chid, so uh, eternity, knowledge, and bliss. In other words, spiritual. His body is spiritual. So it's the, it's the very definition, if you like, of Svarup. Such chid ananda, eternity, knowledge, and bliss. And this can only be seen by pure devotees. We only bliss, see. Bliss is coming when I see Krishna from the eyes of Radha. Yeah. Or near Krishna. Yeah. Because see the lava of my love, she can go and she give in my our love. Ah. That is the place. Is a satya truth. Ah. When you will see him as a satya. Hmm. What you said? The broker. And he put two of my books. It's not clear. Hmm. And my more creating doubts. Hmm. When we see the bliss of. To the priest, mercy, then I feel ananda. That is. Mm. <clears throat> now, Prabhupada goes on. He says, material bodies. Always is telling 
material energy to understand his spiritual energy. Like he said, bullet. Why is it bullet? To understand how to be not bullet. <laughs> so he saw the material that you understand difference between material and spiritual energy of Right. <clears throat> now, Prabhupada is saying material bodies cannot perform the wonderful acts as described in previous verses. Material bodies cannot do this, he says. His body, Krishna's body, is eternal, blissful, and full of knowledge. Although <clears throat> he is not a common man, Krishna, the foolish deride him, criticize him, and consider him to be a man. <laughs> His body is called here Manushin, so a human, a human form, because he is acting just like a man. He's a friend of Arjuna, a politician involved in the battle of Kurukshetra. In so many ways, says Prabhupada, he is acting just like an ordinary man, but actually his body is Sakchid Ananda. The Vigraha, the form of eternity, knowledge, and bliss. He looks like a human form, but his form is divine. And it's only yeah. our problem to see him. And to see him, we, we must understand that Adara needs energy. See yeah. that. Yeah. And just the word, the word Vigraha there the expression or the expansion means that that eternity and, and knowledge and bliss is part of us, part of our souls. And if we purify that part of our souls, we become pure devotees, we can see completely the mm. eternity, knowledge and bliss of, of Krishna. Uh, there are many examples of this, and um, here Prabhupada gives a few of the examples. I've seen some commentaries where there are long lists of examples talking about this from the Vedas. But Prabhupada says, this is confirmed in the Vedic language also. For example, Sakchidananda Rupeya Krishnaya. Translation, I offer my obeisances unto the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, who is the eternal, blissful form of knowledge. And he says there are other descriptions in the Vedic language also. For example, tam ekam govindam, which he translates, you are govinda, the pleasure of the senses and the cows. So you remember this lesson that Gurudev gives us often that Govardhan means increasing, increasing your sense experience. Spiritual sense. Yeah, spiritual, spiritual sense. So Govinda, you have three meanings. It's both a cowherd, it's Krishna, and it's someone who's increasing spiritual sense. Now, Prabhupada continues... Sakchid Ananda Vigraham, and your form is transcendental, full of knowledge, bliss, and eternity. He's just giving another example from the, from the Shastras. And then he says, Prabhupada, despite the transcendental qualities of Lord Krishna's body, its full bliss and knowledge there are many so-called scholars and commentators of Bhagavad Gita who deride Krishna as an ordinary man. Yeah. 
So a different kind of fool. <laughs> and of course, what is the cause of this um, criticism, this derision? Well, it's their blindness, the blindness of the philosophers, because they're not in their own svarup, they're not in their own pure spiritual positions. They don't see Krishna with the eyes of love, so they only see a man. They don't see Krishna with the eyes of the loving energy of Radharani, so they only see a man. They don't see the divine there. So then Prabhupada goes on. He says, the scholar may be born an extraordinary man due to his previous good work. But this conception of Shri Krishna is due to poor fund of knowledge. That's very interesting, of course, because the philosopher has lots and lots of knowledge. But Prabhupada is saying it's the wrong knowledge. It's, no. it's not spiritual knowledge. He has empirical knowledge, logical knowledge, but the philosopher, the scholar, does not have knowledge of the soul. Therefore, he's called Muda, foolish. For only foolish persons consider Krishna to be an ordinary human being because they do not know the confidential activities of the Supreme Lord and his different energies. So you remember maybe way back in the first lesson or maybe the second lesson, we talked about the confidential topics because the chap the title of chapter nine is confidential topics. So the scholars don't know the confidential topics and what are they, we remember? The confidential topic is the secret that the connecting energy behind Krishna's pastimes in the world is Radharani. So the scholars don't know this, they don't see that, and so they see Krishna as a mere strong man, a very strong man. The secret of Bhagavan is that we need to see Krishna with love, or we won't see him at all. And the secret of this love is Radharani. This energy of Radharani is everywhere where Krishna is. It's everywhere where we can see Krishna. And if we cannot see Krishna as a spiritual being, it's because Radharani's energy is being blocked by our material blockages. So Prabhupada continues talking about the, the philosophers. They do not know that Krishna's body is a symbol. The philosophers do not know that Krishna's body is a symbol of complete knowledge and bliss. That he is the proprietor. He's the owner of everything that, that is, and that he can award liberation to anyone. Because, Prabhupada says, the philosophers do not know that Krishna has so many transcendental qualifications. That's why they deride him. So the philosophers and the scholars see Krishna as a simple being, a finite object. A normal, a normal being. Maybe he's a being who is very strong, all-powerful. Maybe he's a being who's even strong enough to create the universe and destroy it. But the scholars think that they can measure that. They can say how big it is or how large it is. The philosophers see Krishna with their minds. They see Krishna as a problem of mathematics. How many 
how much energy do you need to breathe out the universe like Vishnu does? But the mind is finite. And so they see Krishna as finite, as limited. They understand, they understand Krishna with the concepts of, of the mind. They understand that they think that the, the concepts they have in their mind are big enough to capture Krishna. So concepts that we use every day like space and time, how big something is, how long a period is, place and size, but also ideas like beautiful and ugly, all of these, they apply from their mind. They can only think them through their mind. And when we think Krishna through the mind, we, we see only a Krishna which is in the mind. But devotees, pure devotees, see Krishna with the heart. The mind is finite, the heart is infinite. So yeah. by, by seeing Krishna with an infinite heart, we see a God who is infinite. The love in our hearts, the love of Radharani in our heart, is connected to the love of God, of Krishna. So the little bit of Radharani, which is in every heart, helps the devotee to see God and helps the devotee to increase, to increase that, that, that seeing of God become closer to, a, to the spiritual level. The more that divine love is uncovered in the jiva's heart, the closer we get to Radha Mohan. Yeah. So then Prabhupada says, let's see. He's still talking about the philosophers and he says, nor do they know that the appearance of the Supreme Personality of Godhead in his material world is a manifestation of his internal energy. Wow. Right. <laughs> if they knew this, Gurudev, they would it would change their world, the scholars, the philosophers. If they just knew this, just open their minds to seeing that it's part of eternal internality. For example, see Krishna, episode is now. And in first episode, you see, not second even. In first episode, that how Krishna do that Radha got some plus his desire that she has to go hundred years in separation, and then she has to come and. She he followed to her because Radha is going into the material world. So he followed that. Mm. And the devotee who is living in material world, he got the chance to go to the Goloka with the help of Narad. But when he see Radha Krishna, then he see that my Krishna is in Maya, mm. influence Maya, and he tried to help Krishna to come out from the Maya. <laughs> 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 I 
and he is trying too many times and he is fighting. One day, Krishna is sitting Arti time. So Arti happened when he eats something after that. Huh? So he eating, and what he is eating? Radhika eat and then give to play to Krishna. And then stop it, stop it, is a Maya. You want to influence my Krishna. <laughs> If Maya is influencing to Krishna, stop it. I have to help you, Krishna. Yes, I need your help. <laughs> so this is our material. <laughs> so we never accept his spiritual energy. We are so conditioned. Mm. After becoming devotee, we are so conditioned. Even so, yes. Mm. So first episode I had. Sometime I see that. Oh, that devotee means try to help Krishna. They went to go look. What happened? <laughs> oh, he is saying to Krishna, he is in Maya, to see the Radha. Bhagavan hmm. Krishna, yeah. Why Radha is there? Why Radha is there? Why together he is a Bhagavan? Bhagavan no need any Maya near to him. But Gurudev, look what uh, look what Prabhupada says next now. He says wow. Krishna is the master of material energy. Ah. <laughs> so what? Krishna is not under control of material energy. He is the controller of material energy too. We we mustn't forget. He does what he wants with material energy. That's the point. Uh, he controls Maya energy. Yeah. Krishna is controlled by his inner energy. Yeah. <laughs> that they cannot see this. Right. So Krishna controls external energy, but he is controlled by the internal energy of Radha Radha. Uh, uh, very good. So how we can know Krishna without knowing inner energy of Krishna? Hmm? I'm Sakti. What you say? Yoga Maya. Hmm. He is not affected with his material and his no. control. Like Prabhupada said before, one God controls two other. He creates and he controls. So material energy is controlled by Krishna, Hari mm -hmm. Means we say in India, everything is Hari Means because the, the material energy controller and he is giving the material energy capabilities as per the desire of the person. My desire to be a big businessman or your desire is to be a big professor. Hariksha, this is the Hariksha. Hari give this chance to you. Exactly. So here it continues, Gurudev. Now, Prabhupada says, 
He says, as has been explained in several places, for example, in, I think, uh, chapter 7, Mama Maya Duratyaya, so that I cannot be, my Maya cannot be overcome. He claims that material energy, although very powerful, is under his control, and whoever surrenders unto him can get out of control of his material energy. Oh, this is... is that is Hari. And get out who surrender. And if you want to know Krishna, what will happen? Surrender to Radharani. Then you will know that. Then, then you will know. Oh. Yes. If you not surrender to Radha, how you want to see him and control him? He's a controller. I energy. <laughs> Inner energy. He controls his material energy. And who controls him? Radharani's energy. The external, the internal, yeah. It's energy. And you want to see him by your material energy. <laughs> I want to see him by my material energy. I... Foolish. Huh? Foolish. A foolish. So what the foolish cannot see this. <laughs> because they are living in material energy and they love and enjoy that to career with the books. So then Prabhupada goes on, he says, if a soul surrendered to Krishna can get out of influence of material energy, then how can the Supreme Lord, who conducts the creation and maintenance and annihilation of the whole cosmic nature, have a material body like us? This, concept <laughs> this conception of Krishna is complete foolishness, he says. He again, repeat the sweet word. If a soul, Not. if a soul surrendered to Krishna can get out of the influence of material energy, then how can the Supreme Lord, who conducts the creation, maintenance, and annihilation of the whole cosmic nature, have a material body like us? <laughs> this, this is my this conception of Krishna is complete foolishness, he says. <laughs> yes, yes. Hmm. Uh, Brother, <laughs> you see this? He goes on here, let's see. Where are we? So he says, foolish persons <clears throat> foolish persons, however, cannot conceive that the personality of Godhead Krishna appearing just like an ordinary man can be the controller of all the atoms and of the gigantic manifestation of the universal form. They can't wow. conceive it. They, they can't imagine it, the foolish people. <laughs> the biggest and the minutest, the biggest and the smallest, are beyond their conception. Mm. So they cannot imagine that a form like that of a human being can simultaneously control the infinite and the minute. It's a problem of my imagination, Gurudev. Yeah. They're not capable of imagining. Wow. Their imagination is uh, material. Wow. And the part they can't imagine, that part is the loving energy. They can imagine wow. God that's 100 meters tall or 1,000 meters tall or a 
thousand <laughs> kilometers tall, but they can't imagine the infinite love that the God could have. <clears throat> and it will be female. So. Mm. This is also controller of God is a female. Then material energy can. Oh, God <laughs> also needs female. <laughs> I also need one female, like this. This is the material energy problem. Yeah. We see like a material energy to man and woman. Mm. We now see the divinity. Mm. That this pastime. And a pastime is this that to understand easily, mm. to make yourself easy to enter there. Yeah. This will not bring you to the increase your material. No. Other who control Krishna. He will bring you to the material energy. Hmm. No, the material energy is limited, but hmm. the spiritual energy is endless. You see, yes. Yeah. <laughs> this is uh, uh, and the uh, potency of Krishna, Antaranga Shakti, yeah. Yoga Maya, Antaranga Shakti. Yeah. But we don't want to go in yoga maya. We want to be with Mahamaya. Hmm. So Prabhupada continues. Although the foolish cannot imagine how Krishna who appears just like a human being, can control the infinite and the finite, those who are pure devotees accept wow. this. For they know that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Therefore, they completely surrender under him, unto him and engage in Krishna consciousness, devotional service of the Lord. So you only really need to realize that he is Supreme Personality, Bhagavan, that he has an internal energy, which is loving energy, which is pleasure potency, in order to know that you just have to surrender to that. So devotees my, like this, uh, they... Every are... line is... Yes. My. So 10-10, ten, ten, you see, he said, when you sign with Krishna, see? Janana Maharaj, you have? I, I don't see the spot. 10-10. Ten. Ten, ten. Oh, 10-10, ten, ten. I should read. If you like. <laughs> no. Okay. <clears throat> Again. Uh, to those who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. And good day, you say. Read, read, read. Huh? I don't say anything. Okay. I say only Prabhupada's words. Uh -huh. Okay. Time, yeah? yeah, I try to find. You see okay. this book? I hope you took. <laughs> so one should know that the goal is Krishna, and when the goal ah. is assigned, then part. 
The path is slowly but progressively traversed, and ultimate goal is achieved. That's it, that's it, yes. What is the meaning of ultimate goal? Then you will know that Krishna's pleasure giving potential. Mm. <laughs> when you sign with Krishna, still you are doubtful that if this is material and spiritual, then it's not signing. You see that deity and it is a material and it's here. This is the test. This is this. Mm. You know, sign it. You, I want to live in my material mm. because I don't want to sign. <clears throat> I want to be in doubtful nature. And, and signing in this case, that means that recognizing that Krishna is this internal potency. No, signing that I, I like Krishna to you. That you commit to this. Like you buying some flat, you go to the broker and sign it. Yes. I buy it, I will pay it, and you pay. You have to pay it that before that date. Mm. That is signing means I am not doubting now. Yeah. Nobody sign here. Still doubts are there. Mm. Then how you will know further than alternative? Then ultimate. When you how you will go in ultimate? Is the signing Gurudev the signing kind of like a um, stay above that you fix then? Signing is I accepting. We are no stay above necessary. No. As by how is necessary one point in one person. That is the higher stage. When you assign it, <coughs> then you need that. If I not assign it, it's not necessary. Hmm. Okay, six o'clock, Gurudev. Maybe we stop here for for today. Very good. Any other um, sharing from anyone else? So nice to discuss. Yeah, with you. Really? No, no, I'm, I'm completely uh, enjoying and observing with the bath. So right. Ah, oh, yes, you that. Huh? Only a few words. Yeah, okay, you want okay. to. Oh yeah, come. Yes, please. Sabi Rabi, good evening, and all devotees on the world. Si si. I remember once I was, I spoke with one person, uh, and he was completely atheist, and he he told so many things about how. Uh, how this world is constructed. And he's telling again and again, nature, nature, love of nature. And I ask him, those nature, I ask him, those nature, you're telling nature, nature, nature did this, nature did that. I ask him, what, what's those nature? And now, actually, in that time, it was, how to say, I, I understood something, but I couldn't catch so much. I thought, it's nature of Krishna, but I not understand that it's not just nature of Krishna, but it's Shumat Radhika in that time. Now I receive complete answer. Thanks so much. Radhi Radhi. Very nice. Radhi Radhi. Yeah. <clears throat> Radhi Radhi. <clears throat>
Why she mathematical? Because so much love everywhere. For example, it's from those what you read today. Uh, foolish, they couldn't understand what Krishna is not general uh, person, not general human. Uh, we have hands, which is very comfortable to use. We have very nice legs. By why? Why? Because it did it by his love. It did his love. It's Krishna's nature, Shimati Radhika. Radhe Radhe. Very good. Jai Shri Radhe. Radhe. Go on next week. <laughs>